Navajo traditions were under attack. Children from the reservation were being sent to schools where the words and ways of the white men were forced upon them. You can't converse in English when you don't know the language to begin with. So you walk around, you know, being like a, I guess, a dumb, a blind person. But you have to get your message across some way. Your talk in Navajo was reported to your superior. Anyway, you were punished one way or another. But these young men and their language, the heart of the culture the white man tried so hard to wipe out, would help turn the tide in the Pacific War. On the reservation, Navajo men, young and old, were lining up to fight for America, despite their bitter history. All I know was that this is our land. When I heard it was being bombed, being attacked by some enemy, then that didn't set too well with me. In all, nearly 4,000 Navajo left the world of the reservation to join a world at war. Some 400 would serve as code talkers with the U.S. Marines. From Guadalcanal to Okinawa, the Navajo signalmen strung phone lines. They hauled field radios and fought on the front lines. Yet of all their duties, none was more crucial than turning their language into secret words of war. America was looking for a code that the enemy in the Pacific would not understand, cannot break. So they came upon the Navajo language, and Navajo language was then used to create a code that only 400 of us would know and understand. And if a Navajo is captured from here or listening, would not even know what we're talking about. That's how, how the code was structured. Their mighty code was so effective it remained top secret even after the war. And rather than give the secret away, the code talkers came quietly home keeping their oath of silence about what they have accomplished 